In the last class, we have been seeing about uh, migration of BW from relational database to HANA database. It is what we consider as lift and shift. You're just lifting the data from one database and transferring it to another database. You're not converting it, okay? And we have seen some uh, multiple options of installing new system and then our in-place migrations uh, with the DMO. And then we've seen some considerations. We need to have some system installed and it could be a standard of distributed systems or it should be a dual stack split where Java stack and the web stack should be in different application server and in, in it, if you have BW or HANA, it should be Unicode compatible. And the role-based authorizations are not supported. It has to go with analysis operations. And then once it is migrated, we also should have to consider about converting cubes to unoptimized cubes, converting multiple or info sets to what? Composite providers. And even the cube, if you have cubes with beta black accelerator, will be deactive because once HANA comes in, there's no more use of beta black it becomes inactive and you have to activate them back and reload the data from the underlying DS1. So we need to perform some couple of housekeeping activities and then we have set a note for checking whether the BW is ready for the mic BW system is ready for the migration. So we have some note for checking it or all the ABAP customizations required can be checked from this ZBW ABAP analyzer from this note. What sizing we can get to this note or discontinued features of Big Square can be understood from these notes. And then <clears throat> for sizing I told we basically use this program which actually gives you that and based on that you and it has a note. If you don't have this program you can implement this note. Eh? And they use this formula, they get out to the company. <coughs> now, now let us assume that um, we have a, we have done the sizing and we have the new and we already done the um, checking of the BW system for the ready for, ready for migration. So we have implemented all the nodes what has been required. We have identified what is the customizations required in all the above programs and we identified what are the changes we need to carry out in the PEX query so that it does work fine even after migration systems. And then now the HANA system is already installed. <clears throat> so what we do is, so before they start migration, you can hear my voice now, right? Hello? Uh, so now we're going to see. So what we do is, before we start the actual migration process, we would do certain pre-migration or pre-upgrade because it will be upgrade and migration together because only from BW7.3 SP5 it supports to have HANA as a backend. So if you're running BW on 7.0, you have to my upgrade your BW version as well as migrate your database. Both will go together. So before the actual process of upgrade and migration takes place, we need to do some pre-migration, pre-upgrade activities. And same way, we'll have to carry out some post and um, post upgrade and post migration activities. Okay. We'll discuss on this, but there are some couple of points which are not listed here, here also, but I'll, I'll discuss that. Actually, <clears throat> uh, first thing is they run this um, program, SMIGR underscore create underscore DDL. We don't do this. This will be done by the basis. When they run this program, what it does is, based on the database of the present, let's say you have MS SQL database, with all the tables what it has got, what is DDM, a data definition language tables, for all those tables, it creates an export SQL. So for example, I have 10 tables. It formulates 10 create table statements. So that when the same SQL statement is executed into HANA, the tables are created in the HANA database. So when you run this program, based on the definition of the existing database of my BW, it, it, it creates an all DDL statements of for all those views, tables, everything. And these statements will be carried out and executed in HANA again, so which creates the database first. That's that. You remember about export and import, I showed you, even in HANA, we can export a schema and then import. When you're exporting, what is happening? Is it creating the, is it exporting a, a SQL statements, the DDL statements and the data to be imported? That's how it formulates all the DDL statements. Then we do a lot of housekeeping activities and, and testing uh, before even migrating it. What we do is, 
Okay, I was skipping ahead. We discuss on this, but before I was skipping ahead, this what as a PW consultant. Let's say we we have implemented a lot of applications in PW. Let's say you implement SD module, MMP, P, Finance, all those. For each application, you will consider some 10 or 15, depending on uh, how accurate you want to be. Generally, they take some 10 reports for each of us in SD. In BW, sales relevant, they take some 10 reports, MM 10, uh, finance 10 reports. They, say they take some 10, 10 reports for each application. And then they collect two informations on each of this. Report. One is the, they give certain selections and run the report and take the snapshot of the reports. For all these reports, they run the reports with certain selections and take the snapshot of the report output. If they run in analyzer, they can save those Excel files. And for all those reports, they take they collect the statistics data. Because I would like to know what was the runtime of those queries. Two things. You take certain reports output and take the snapshot for certain selections of the report. But you will not go very detailed. You try to, let's say, you have a report on the company code wise. Instead of going very detailed level, I'll take a report snapshot drilling down on company code. Maximum, let's say I've got 10 company codes. I'll get a report with what? 10 rows. So aggregated values. So I can compare this report. <clears throat> so I take the report snapshots and the statistics of those reports also. Yeah, and you can run that an analyzer and keep those Excel snapshots for all those reports have it ready. So that these report snapshots can be leveraged to compare with the queries after it's been migrated. So that we can do two things you can achieve. One is <coughs> comparison of performance and data validations also can be done with this. Clear on this? That is, uh, that is one aspect which needs to be carried out as part of pre. And then next is we do, I told you, our major point of focus will be to shrink your database. Means we need to reduce the size of the present database. Now, logically, if you see about, uh, when you say about reduce, you want to reduce the size of the database, you would delete a lot of unwanted tables, like PSA tables to be cleaned out, change log tables, yes, sir, uh, the log tables, or job log tables, or let's say uh, uh, statistics tables, there will be some RS, some, there are some standard tables which will really occupy a lot of space and those can be cleaned out if it's not necessary. That is what you have to focus on, uh, cleaning up the space. And one more point, I also told you there is some uh, cube or a DSO which has got some 10 years or 15 years of data which is really used, but you don't want to store in the primary database, you want to push it into, you'll have certain archiving strategy, you'll say, I love my cube only with current three years or four years of data and the rest all data I'll push into NLS which, is a, which will be a secondary database which could be Sybase IQ or DB2 whatever it is. So even you will have to configure NLS so that unwanted, not unwanted, not frequently used and not subject to change. For a, This is very important because uh, for example I have a record in a DSO and if this record is subject to change the record comes in and it goes in overrides. But, but when it's overwritten, what you've done is you've taken this record to NLS. Now when this record comes in, it treats this as a new record. So you're going to have a difference in the values. So the data, what is not frequently used and not subject to change, you push that into NLS. You'll have certain archiving strategy, you'll say less than five years, less than two years, less than whatever it is, and then you push the data into NLS. That is also one kind of activity to reduce your size of your database. Okay? And as you rightly said, for example, if there are any queue, because once we go to, going to be on HANA, the performance of reports on cube or DSO are going to be same. Suppose if I have configured cube on top of DSO just for aggregating it, just for aggregating the queue, uh, data, those cubes can be eliminated so that uh, I'll, I'll no more use those cubes and start replacing the cube with what? DSOs and all the multiple words wherever it is beneath. They can do even that kind of changes and converting the objects from 3.x to 7 flow will also be performed. You can do it after migration or before anything, anyway it's fine. But preferably, preferably we'll try to do before, that's the better one. But if you're on 7.0, I'd prefer it on after because when you go to 7.4, you can migrate the complete flow at a stretch because you'll have flexibilities of RS migrate which allows you to migrate 
complete data flows also. That also you can think about as post migration also. Okay. Because if you don't convert or convert, you're not reducing any size, any space, any sizing area. Okay. Hmm. Clear on this? Um, apart from this, you can also do a lot of migration, a lot of housekeeping activities. Generally, what I told you, for most of the housekeeping activities for pre-migration, post-migration, pre-upgrade, post-upgrade, SAP has given certain standard task list, which can be executed automatically. You don't have to run one by one. So what you can do is you can use this P code STC01. You can go, you can use this P code STC01 and, and use the task list and schedule that. Mm. Now if I, what I'll do, I go to this, uh, When you go to STC01, it's an important T code and when you say F4, you find certain task list. See, you see some uh, task list saying BW after migration, after upgrade, before migration, uh, before upgrade. And there are certain specific housekeeping activities also. So you can just select this task list and say view. you'll have lot repairing of indexes, repairing of PSA partitions, reorganizing the bookmarks. These all are your certain task list for housekeeping activities. What again, I can just say it's good and it starts uh, running this all this task one by one. You don't have to do manually, you can just say execute. It starts running all this task one by one. You just have to schedule that as a job. For one loop code, you should start scheduling that as a job and, and when, you, when you see this green, it is executed successfully and this was not relevant, so it is straight away gone into this uh, step. But it just keeps running all the steps one by one. <clears throat> okay. I will run the task list for housekeeping. Similar way, I will have task list for... Uh, Mm. Before migration and what? Before upgrade. All these tasks, so if you go to before upgrade, there might be some tasks which are overlapping. For example, if you see cube index repair or like overlapping, it, that's fine. Eh? This will be task list for upgrade and then if you say for... Mm, what is before migration. You'll have sort of task list for... See, Pretty much there are some overlapping steps, it's fine. You can execute them again and again. All these steps are to suppose in, in a new system, when you go in, when you say for, when you search for this, uh, these uh, task lists, you may not find them, housekeeping or migration upgrade. Then what it is, you have to implement this note. What is this note? 1829728. When you implement this node, note, uh, that is, you'll get those housekeeping task list. That is actually a certain program. If you go it get in, if you open this node, and uh, you go to STC01, but you're not finding that housekeeping task list and Kanapal You don't find the task, then you have to import, you have to implement this node to get the task list. Mm. You just read through that note, but yeah, if you go in, you see you in the it last key whether it is seven point three or seven point zero, seven point four, you'll have a PDF guide, just go through that guide and you download this text. Dot dot txt will have that program. Uh, for example, if it is seven point zero no. This will have a certain program here. I just have to get this program out. Then once this program is implemented, you will start getting the task list. There is a report with this name. 
means I already I should if I am seeing the task list I should have already improved implemented that program yes <coughs> There, there will be a, there will be a note to us. Uh, so you just have to implement this. Then where are they? 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 But you you can implement that program and you get the task list actually. Yeah. And same way for pre upgrade and post upgrade migrations, you'll have one more note. <coughs> If you don't find the task list, you have to implement these nodes okay, to get those task lists. Mm. And depending on the version, just pick the text.txt file and then... Mm. You will have some note. This will give you the, the task list for pre-upgrade, post-upgrade, post pre-upgrade, uh, pre-migration and post-migration. All the task list features. When you implement these two nodes, you get those task lists. Okay. Mm. Then one more very important point. Okay, what you do? You go to the STC01. You'll, you'll execute the task list for housekeeping as well as what? Pre-upgrade and pre-migration. All these three task list set, you'll execute it. But what SAP has done is, so, there will be a lot of activities which you need to carry out as part of uh, migration, whether it is pre or post. So what, and like so one, one, one activity is about running the steps, right? About all the housekeeping act task lists. What SAP want is they didn't want you to go to different different T codes, do different different things. They want to have one centralized T code from where you can execute all those steps, whether it is migration or uh, migrating to seven point explore, whatever it is, all the steps. Yeah? So what they've done is they've given certain note one nine zero nine. This is very important note one nine zero nine five nine seven, which is called as migration cockpit. So this will give you one defined program from where it calls STC01 or, or all those tasks from where you can do all the migration relevant stuff whether it's pre or post. Okay. Mm. This is the major note. 1909597 migration cockpit and a good note on this. This is nothing but it's a program. When you deploy this program it is going to give you a centralized uh, program from where you can call everything. At the STC0 you have a from there I can call that also. This is all important note. You just uh, read through this PDF and this, this PDF will tell you how to run this, use this uh, tool. If you just tell a bunch of note, the screen allowance and each one is for different things and uh, this is a note what you have to implement and this is for migration carpet and only thing is this note will give you a program yeah the, the zip will have that program which it will have a text file and you copy the program after the program is copied it says at line number 21 and 22 you should change this you should change the proxy.example.com with what with your uh, host name and with the port you have to change your numbers okay and activate the program line number 21 to March and then mm, for ZB HANA you remember this uh, 172 double nine double eight this will be a composite note for all those what we discussed this is one centralized note you remember this checklist mm, yeah, then you have a bit of a sizing tool yeah mm -hmm. and then our po this is our post copy automation uh, we don't worry on this um, then this is yes. I'll discuss on this note. I'll come to that. Yes, you want application specific upgrade. When you do an upgrade of 
application, there will be some steps again. There will be some certain task list. What SAV does is, SAV gives you task list as an XML file. If we import that XML file, we, I'll tell you that. And there's, what is BW transformation finder about uh, BW transformations, what is that, what needs to be done in each, there's a specific note for it. And in any note implement this, our program, main program work code then, actually. And what is ZBW apparently remember this, analyzing your ABAP code, mm, SQL monitor, then this note. Once you implement all, and when I click these buttons, it is going to jump to some programs which needs those nodes. That's the point. Yeah. You just go through and then check this out. Yeah. And then you can take this zip file and So you'll have this uh, program, if you just doubt by heavy count and uh, line number 21 and 22, you have to change your uh, host name and the port as per the system. Okay, and this is the program, ZBW HANA migration underscore carpet. That's your program. Then already is not the one. So I already copied that program and at line number, I've just given my host name and my port was okay. And when I run this program and the program just you get to see this. This is one centralized uh, tool with where you can handle most of your migration activities. Mm. This is a, okay. Um, this is see if you remember, this is about checking uh, checklist tools. You remember this? What what was this program about? Tested I showed you this. What was it? Checking the BW system readiness for migration, you remember? We could execute that separately. Or if I implement this complete cockpit, there's a check, there's a uh, button called check checklist tool. If I click it is item, get into a program which you remember the note uh, that it checking the readiness of the BW system for HANA migration. Uh, analyzing and repairing BW objects. If there's any planning function, I can execute the planning function and check in. At all. Okay, size sizing tool. I can go to sizing tool. Configuring NLS. Yeah. Or housekeeping act. Now, normally if I do, if I need to do housekeeping act, I go to STC zero and choose the task. Would you click this? You get ultimately. It is going to STC zero and getting to this. So it's like one centralized cockpit for all. See, deleting all app statistics, application log deletion. IDOC, deleting old arc, IDOC archives, list of large tables, all those housekeeping activities can be performed from this particular tab here. And you'll have tab relevant to migrate. I, I'll discuss on this ASU, the, even that last set of task list which we need to execute as part of application specific upgrade. Uh, it's of the um, warehouse management, converting data flows from three point text. You know how to convert it. We can go to RS migrate and convert. Equinox will convert this. This one, where is it going? Hmm, where is it going? Hmm. Ultimate. That is, screen with all the internal options. Migrating from three and then transformations potentially uh, identifying transformations which will have problem. Object uh, activating selection of bearable objects of repair if there are any inactive objects you are repairing them. At the same pixel element. Uh, query relevance, I can migrate three point X uh, web, web, uh, web reports to seven. Bex query migrations, uh, converting three point X to seven workbooks. And the options here. And secretary, what I told you about role based authorizations are not supported in Tahana. We need to migrate from role based authorization to announce authorizations. Our conversion is going to It's like one screen where you can do trigger everything. Next, optimizations. You remember optimizations? We need to find out the ABAP code which needs me to know. this when I click this it is actually getting into you remember this screen what is it ZBW ABAP analyzer program exactly 
um, web test cockpit, code inspector, then SQL checking, open SQL checking out. About the documentation, you can just click documentation and read. And the communities, BWHANA, just documentation can help us. This is like one, so you can either go to STC general directly or from the migration cockpit, you can perform the housekeeping activities in from this tab. Migrate, Puriya, migrate, post, migrate, under the name. Hmm. Chodo. This is housekeeping activities. Apart from housekeeping activities, I told you, you should perform pre-upgrade and pre-migration. If you go to migrate, you get task list. Set up task list for automated execution during upgrade or migration. If you click this, task manager will get this, this is the thing that you can do. Before you go, after you go. You can just select this. Ultimately, it is getting the same. Housekeeping act is task list to migrate someone in task list. Apart from this housekeeping and what? Migration. I told you there's something. What about this? Yes, you know, application specific upgrade activities. And let's look at this. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. 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 One e number on the other. You just get into this note, and when you go into this note, this note will give you some dot XML file. Uh, when you go to this note, it does give you dot XML. When you get down, uh, see you. You just take what is it? You, you want to go seven point four DMV or something? Yeah, DMV option. I want going with what? DMV migration. Just. So when I unzip this, this will basically give me dot what is it? Dot XML file. So when I import this XML file into my BW system, it gives formats at a task list. You can just copy this and uh, take it to my. Uh, you'll have a T code called slash uh, ASU slash start. The slash in the middle. Okay, you get into this T code uh, slash ASU slash start. You can know the video. Hmm. So what is it? Say button. Import new ASU content definition. Actually, I XM in the XML file what SM is given. He has formatted all the coding relevant for the automatic task list for this application. Just say import. Yeah, file where input now. Yes. Select this and not newer than already. Okay, and already installed this now. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, improve. Sorry. And already imported. So, well, you imported the gloves. Let's double click on this. Uh, what do you say? Then what? Uh, Jump to task list is already there or create new task list and test and then. Mm, jump to task list. And this will show me certain task list what is available. About uh, some checking some nodes which is required before upgrade, activating infobics, uh, checking consistency, RSZ tables, checking mass reading consistency, and, and everything is some relevant. It gives you details on this node. And you want to start executing these nodes, then you'll say what start fully automatic preparation activities. And what the nothing would it do, it has to it has start these activities. And as part of ASU also, you'll have certain activities again, which can again overlap with those also, but you still perform this also. So next is you perform this ASU tools, and there are certain nodes which we at a one of the prior days, we have no implementation numbers, but just have it like that. Hmm. 
then they also use t code called unicode prep because i told you when you have bw or hana all bw must be unicode compatible with the dm box itself you do upgrade migration as well as what unicode conversion so they use a t code called spumg for all the unicode relevant uh, settings hmm so once and 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 then see majorly it is housekeeping pre upgrade pre migration task list and taking the report snapshots and holding the present performance of the uh, statistics of the queries and you keep it ready okay boss and um, and then you start migrating then they act after all this task list they start the actual migration process and then they they'll use that software some manu software untundi they w can they open that up and then it will it's like sequence of dialog box and you want to migrate to which version to what is the ip address? you want to migrate database uh, what is ip address of the database uh, hana database and what is the system id host name and you know next next code could tell that actual migration will is done general actual migration goes on for around uh, 24 hours or uh, 36 hours or 40 hours range lo elta depending on the size that's all majorly on the basis but they use it to aim less they use that software some with the dm option they run that out i'll show you that డౌన్లోడ్ ఉంటాను ఇక్కడ ఒక స్క్రీన్ షాట్ లో do you want to migrate your system to another database type uh, yes and what is this emi hana ikkada migration kedu adi undu kabatti i am not able to show you practically and original license untane they take maavu amarkettu cheyalem adi problem as well as you say this it will ask you that migration key adu ledhu kabatti we cannot do otherwise it's straight forward mm. and next you say standard standard system or distributed system is a standard and then okay then it you will give the host name of your hana server then system sid anni ichi kodta vante kodte just say next next how many build bookmarks you want next go to put the next thing and it starts anta ipana em untundi complete antu ante nu chesi em led after migration steps it last you also want to migrate ante yes sir database antu ye database hana ante ana database anni isthe kodte it the database is migrated it's it's all automated because the focus is hana is sap system so is given lots of uh, perfect tool which can easily migrate it run migration complex is over bodu kada na andu vaadu endu vaadu demand peragalante migration would simplified jalan one focus adu okay boss hmm that's by running the steps like this he does the all the egg, actual migration part boss then once the migration is done then we will have to carry out what post migration and post upgrade activities okay hmm. first before we carry out all the testing part we do this part now again when you go to stc01 you have to execute the task list which is for what after upgrade after migration you seen that one choose now i can go to stc01 or after after upgrade and what after migration okay. see even if before migration already configured nls archive it will still continue it'll have the same connection you still continue with the new system also hmm. check the hana database with the dba cockpit generally what you do is 
you install hana studio and then you get on to administration to see that right and you get into this and then you select this then you go to administration you see the host name or anna kada atla kaakunda even from even from let's say uh, this bidu with hana i can go to a tiko dba cockpit to see ante once it is migrated do you need to have the bw connected to the primary database hmm. now when i go to dba cockpit you see this database connection what is the db user here you can do it mathe sil entu ek primary database connection default and system data a what is schema here sa web app one host is cubex sp9 connect aitha so this is the actual details you can get to see chana judu chandu ikkada system configurations ki elthe system information large tables of the config server secure to do the configuration course uh, how many and from dv cockpit you can observe any host you don't do anything here it's only about checking whether my connection between bw and the primary database hana is all fine or not you can check the services all the servers which has been running on and we can see the volume of data how much has been occupied in which database a server lo enta database enta data occupied nu chudochu backup avani man kosam lo kodu you can also you can also open sqlator from here and run your sql statements also if you don't have because after immediately if you don't have the the studio you can also do for good you can just run some query and see whether query is working for just checking whether the connection between my bw and hana is all fine and the configuration is fine and the green one i do some yeah hmm. next this one repair inconsistency ps idi chaala chaala important point uh, recently i had discussed with one of my friend who has done the migration what a problem it was see and one more thing was as part of pre migration or pre upgrade do we unschedule all the process changes because normal daily you have process which are running which will be loading the database during upgrade you will be stopping all the data loadings when you say you stopping the data load means what all the processes will be removed from schedule and common adu okay kada step one normal upgrade step in the process and it run cheyakon off chesin tappudu migration gante mundu i migration ayipoyina malli start chesta okay na so chaala chaala important point this is what you can raise it as an issue what you had focus was let's say you have lot of extractors of ecc which is already connected to bw and everything was running up and running daily process running so you wanted to go so tomorrow you want to start the migration you have scheduled the downtime in bw so when the downtime is scheduled what is it you going to stop server is going to be down right so you going to stop all the processes but before i stop the processes very very impo- important point is do we have delta q in ecc you will have extractor queue we will have dead so you need to clean those queues before you stop so what i would do is um, i would stop what they have done is they have stopped removed the, all the processes from the schedule and they, they have scheduled downtime in ecc also and they have run v3 job so all the data from extractor queue is collected to what delta queue now no more records in extractor queue it's black and v3 job is also stopped okay removed from schedule then now i've got data in delta queue what they have done is they have run info they, when you run info package delta manually then what happens data from delta queue is brought into what ps but you still have the delta queue entries in the repeat delta to clean that also they have run delta once more which will bring zero from zero i know for each data source they run delta twice once to bring delta records once to clean repeat delta clean the repeat delta also they run another delta so it brings zero from zero but the delta queue is cleaned out is it okay na what they have done is they just loaded those new delta records only till psa and they went for migration they didn't want to waste time in loading to the next level targets and keep it ready and then they went for migration but so where is all my data now all the new delta is in psa and they went for migration after migration when they trying to load if they are not able to 
after migration, when they're trying to load data from this PSA to the next load target, they're not able to load this. Because after it is migrated, hmm, I'll show you. Double zero double zero one one two. Six ninety two. The end of seven point four. Huh? Actually, when you migrate from seven point uh, old version to this one. Uh, what they had is there's some new column which there's some change in this uh, table structure because of this the delta request what they already collected that into PSA they could not process it next level targets that is a problem they had no, hmm. the PSA table gets changed after your migrations and so the, the old request which they already collected that into PSA they could not load it to the next level target they had that issue. Okay. So to recorrect all the PSA tables, if there's any inconsistency, we run this program. RSDU underscore PSA underscore part number underscore check those. So we use this program to correct all the inconsistencies in the PSA. Most of the PSA tables are either inconsistent or the program to correct out. Uh, e problem good e problem good once again once the it's migrated i have this problem in my system income so the data is not returned so they could identify that by quality in production they yeah See, I still have this problem. In my 7.4 SP11, I have this problem. Uh, if I... If I try to see the master data, do not good. Now, you remember normal screen, when I say master data, I should get an ALV grid screen where I can select, but it is opening up my browser. That is what missing of master data view sometimes. Normally, when I say maintain master data, I need to get an above screen with the te like table content screen like stuff and then I should get a view that is called a missing view something like that, yeah? so for that what you do is you run this program Z R that you, you get, to get to see that kind of problem when you migrate bus Z R S D M D underscore check underscore CHA views mass data views and you can get to details on that note one eight nine two eight one nine so when you say maintain mass data, other than that, browser can be found. So those mass data views are missing out. To fix that mass data issues, you can fix this or not. Okay. Next, uh, activate all your transformations. As the next step of post upgrade activities or migration activities, you activate all your transformations. RS DZ underscore TRNF underscore activate. Do you, now why do we activate these transformations? And what the system loaner transformation is activated in the end of the You remember the checkbox SAP and execution? Hmm. Yeah. Only after only after the system is migrated to HANA, you will have this checkbox, right? In the transformations. But if you put select when you activate, 
when you activate and if the if, if system is able to push those transformations, the checkbox gets enabled. So we don't know which transformation has got flexibility of pushing down. So we act we start activating all the transformations. What are the transformations it is able to push down? It will start enabling the checkbox. That's where we activate all the transformations by using that program. Okay, was very very important. The next uh, converting HANA objects to HANA optimized objects. Nothing but what uh, you convert. Uh, cubes into unoptimized cubes. How do you convert? You, how do you migrate normal cubes into unoptimized cubes? RS MIGR HANA DB is a T code or you can run the program and start what? Uh, you specify all the cubes and start migrate. But can I can I migrate multiple cubes at a time? Yes, uh, arrow mark Gorthik, multiple cubes here too. But only thing is in the real time they don't go cube by cube or all, all cubes at a time. They'll take application by application. Right? They'll take sales. All the cubes relevant to sales will be migrated. Next, Malli, finance. Adla. Okay, okay, set, set to this one. Okay, number was fine. Hmm. And this very, very important. And the other day in the interview, he was very much happy with this point. Uh, let's see our existing multi providers and existing info sets. And by using this program, you can convert those existing multi or info sets to what? Composite product by using this pro rs underscore convert underscore ipro to hcpr was after migrating do we need to reinstallize the data source uh, see the task is generally it is nothing to be running by outside, so it will be even base person can just create tasks and he can execute it. So nothing problem. But these tasks we will may basically build will consult and does it. Uh, then uh, in once you have it, Hana, do we have roster tables and columns or tables? Uh, generally, all system tables will be migrated as uh, roster and standard tables. All other application tables will be column store. But there might be some requirement, uh, let's say my RS statistics tables, I still, even though they are standard, I want them to be as columns. Too. Then I can use this program RSD underscore move underscore two underscore column, where you can move the row store tables to column store tables, so that it improves my performance of reading. And bro, statistics tables are like system tables, but I am using it for more of reading, so I want to convert them to columns. Too. Then I can use this program. If you have certain row store tables and you want to convert them to column, I can use this program, okay? And uh, and we don't know which, if there might be some tables having some inconsistency. To solve all the inconsistency on the tables, then we use this program, RSD underscore table underscore inconsistency. This is a program to check the inconsistency of all the tables. Uh, after migration, do we have to reinstallize the data source? If the data source delta magnitude is disturbed. So what we generally, generally, since we are migrate, upgrading your build system, corresponding uh, enhancement patches will be applied in ECC also. When you are upgrading PW, corresponding enhancement patches also will be applied in ECC, which can be disturbing your data source delta mechanism. Then what you do, you, in that case, you reinstallize your extract. Generally, you will have the problem of timestamp error. You get that problem. If you are able to solve the problem and do process the delta, it's fine. If not, you will have to reinstallize. And un this problem, may not, you may not be reinstalling for every data source. There might be some data source getting disturbed with certain support pack. For those extractors, you have to reinstalize. Otherwise, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Then apart from all this, do we also carry out a lot of testing aspects? These are the steps what we do so that once this is all done, your system is migrated and all the corrections in the system is done now. Now I need to do the testing part. Uh, you can you can think about in migrating 3.x to 7.x flow, migrating big stories, workbooks, or uh, migration, or uh, normal migration of 3.x flow to 7 can be done as part of post migration or post upgrade. Next test testing. Now testing is what I already collected the report snapshots as part of pre upgrade or pre migration. So as part of post, I will run the same reports with same selections and check the data. I validate my data. If the data is correct, then 
data is valid okay and then i also compare the performance so that i i know the i collect i collect the statistic present statistics and the old statistics and see what is the time difference if there is a query which is running for five minutes previously now i see query running in one minute so i see a purely difference in the performance of the queries i will prove here you have to prove all those things uh, that is part of testing you do and you get a lot of optimizations you carry out like say migrating 3.x data flow to 7 migrating a big query or workbook from 3 how do you migrate big query to 7 just you open the big query in 7 query is then save it gets migrated and how do you migrate workbook you open 3.x workbook to 7 not like in from migration carpet you have a button which can migrate it automatically and then convert queues to unoptimized queues and remove queues if it is used as data mart for days it used only for aggregation you know, i told you you will be eliminating queues at the top if they are used only for aggregation then replace queues with that uh, if you have to use queues you can replace info queues with advanced dsv so you can you, you know about advanced dsv like queue but if it is within one if, you, if there is a queue with 120 characteristics i can convert it to advanced dsv but if it is more than 120 i can't handle it because in a queue all characteristics must be primary key. and what is max number of key fields uh, primary key characteristics you can have in advanced dsv only 120 And and convert multiple to composite provider, and then push down the transformations only for specific use cases where my transformations are really slow. Once it is migrated, Hana, I can start customizing or optimizing those transformations by implementing Hana expert protein by using ABAP managed database procedures, and we start leveraging VW modeling tools of Hana Hana perspective. and query snapshots if there's any some queries which are running slow i can start using concepts of query snapshot to improve query performances and once it is done you need to do certain optimizations of processes because once it is migrated you don't have accelerator no more bit of accelerator no aggregates nothing so in the processes you might have roll up of indexes or roll up of aggregates all those processes must be removed even if you don't remove that it's fine because Process will have it, but it does not execute that. Even if it is there, fine. But still, as part of optimization, you start clearing your process and definition by removing all the unwanted processes like rollups, even the TS one. And then you know, no more concept of DB statistics, uh, constructing or building indexes, even in those only. All these processes can be removed out. And remember, there is no concept of unoptimized DS. If you already migrated in seven point two, you have reconvert them back to what standard DSVs. These are the points you can think of. Yeah, and um, now do we still use aggregates after migration? Was no. You even before migration, you will deactivate all the aggregates. When you deactivate aggregates, what happens? Aggregates deactivate with them. Definition to get data must be delete type. Like this, aggregates are ruled out. And one, as part of one of the housekeeping activities, where you reduce the sizing, delete, deactivating aggregates is also one of the steps. What you can do. Okay, boss. Hmm. So what? Hmm. Hmm. uh no are you going to share this i will not share this pvt but i'll tell you from where did i pick this up i'll tell you okay mm -hmm. thank you okay uh so i'm just playing this just look at what how i was explaining this guy yeah about he just asked me only one see his requirement was He, he has a project where he wants to migrate from VW 7.0 to 7.4 and uh, migrate Hana. And he was supposed to put me onto the project as a lead. And he was asking me what you will do, how you will do. Get this? And he said, give me step by step what will you do. And I had this PowerPoint in in front of me, and I was answering. No, we even you got we are we understood what we are doing, but how I'm how is it I'm answering that guy?
That's exactly what I want to do. Okay. 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 You don't have a question, only answer. Uh, pretty good. You know, like uh, basically I work with uh, two different uh, engagements on uh, PWO or HANA with mixed approach. Where they are using HANA as a native HANA as well as the HANA was used as a backend database for PWO also. I was part of a pre-upgrade and uh, pre-migration, post-upgrade, post-migration. As part of analyzing the ZG PWO app analyzer program and uh, migration cockpits. Analyzing the pass animations, what needs to be done, replacing select star with the select column, listing of the columns, uh, eliminating parole entries, and this kind of customizations are done. And as part of it, there are some function modules which are absolute and we have to replace the, the new function modules, especially for the file upload programs and the, some of the custom function modules written for TPS. And uh, pretty strong with the text reporting and uh, even the back end with SAP and the integration of QODs towards PW and the SAP integration towards PW with the TIMS 2011 SP5 and the pretty strong HANA modeling and HANA database um, and also different data provisionings on to it uh, with the SAP QOD smart data access also worked on yeah so this is pretty much my strengths on it yeah yeah Question is, he is asking me a question, so that's all fine. Let's assume we want to migrate. Now give me step by step he's asking. Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, see, uh, uh, there are a couple of things which we would have considered. There are some considerations which we have to go through. Uh, first thing is, um, what is our present PW version? Let's say if it's 7.x, it will be different. Uh, 7.0. He confirmed me that it is 7.0. DMO option to which we can do upgrade as well as migration and unicode conversion also to that, uh, together. And one more point to be noted is when you when you find the ship towards 7.4 or with minimum 7.3 supports you speed up the HANA as a backend database. We do not have Java stack and other stack together. We need to have split up. We need to have the Java stack to be installed in separate application server and integrate it together. It cannot go, go together. That's the point we, we have to control that point also. And, and also one more major point is when you are trying to move to HANA, uh, which is in memory database, we have to reduce the data. We don't have the freedom of having the data huge database size. We need to have more compressed formats. So then our focus also would be on reducing the size of the present data stocks. Uh, so it's, it, we would have to concentrate on uh, L, uh, deleting PSA tables, or unwanted log tables, or RSVD stat tables, all of them might have to be removed. I'm just going through a rough and I'll get into details of each of them. So these also can be continued. Basically, we have reduced the sizing of our database before even think about migrating so that you would get the exact sizing of your PWS, uh, HANA database sizing also. Yeah. And also we should focus on installing some of the nodes which is for the z migration cockpit or let's say z adapt analyzer or database sizing. There are different set of nodes what is SAP has given us. For example, if you look at this, we have some uh, uh, node one two one seven two double nine double eight which is actually the SAP PWR and HANA checklist, which gives you complete pre-migration and post-migration, pre-upgrade and post-upgrade checklist also, which gives comes from that. And also we have implemented the note 1847431, which is actually percent PWR ABAP analyzer, which helps you to analyze complete ABAP coding of your entire payroll system and lets me know which of the statements are not really suitable for running on HANA data. Mainly it focuses on select star and for all interest aspect majorly. And also if you look at Yeah, yes, Peter. So what actually my
migration uh, would go on for let's say around uh, three, depending on the database size, I would say. Uh, I'll ask you about estimate how many days. Yes, actual migration. But that actually also involves uh, pre upgrade, pre migration, and post upgrade, post migration activities also. Generally, I would, uh, my estimate of this would be for around uh, three weeks to four weeks for one system, one landscape. Means like for one development system, the quality production. I would go with say three weeks to four weeks approximately. So that may be slight difference on food depending on the sizing and some complex of the application. If there are a lot of inactive in objects or a lot of objects, a lot of data volume is there, then it would take long. But generally it goes with, with based on my experience, I would say three to four. Yeah, one yeah, in the landscape, one system, it will be approximately three weeks to four weeks. That will be fine then. So let's say my landscape is with uh, standard landscape with development quality and then let's say production. Let's say we would have done a POC also. We would, some, we would have a copy of the production and then try to do a POC to see if you what issues are getting in. So let's take it as uh, four months altogether, including the POC system, which we do it. Uh, then uh, once we have the estimate of four weeks, then we get into the details of the resources. I would need, uh, I would need a I would need approximately uh, three BW consultants and I would need uh, one app app. Basically, if we have to do something with the absolute function modules or to run some uh, some debugging kind of stuff on the class issues, I need one app app. Then we would need dedicated basis consultants uh, who would be basically Linux admin because the HANA runs on, uh, because we need to have a fresh HANA installation to be done on SUSE Linux and the HANA to be installed. Then we need a normal uh, PW basis consultant who actually has to take care of the upgrade also. And then uh, and then this be a, and the HANA person is expected to even to run the DM watch because he can take care of what exporting his complete DML and importing the same to the HANA database. So we would basically I would expect a team of around seven to eight people including PW consultants, APAP consultants, and then I would be a basis consultant. This would be the team which actually can go with the migration plans. So estimate is for our four months, and this is eight, eight to ten people with the team size. Yeah, because if I purely feel um, it's on the normal system, uh, not an extreme complex system, but if the system is really complex and the number of objects are really huge, the number of mutable concerns would increase because there will be a lot of testing part going on. Because before going for it, because when you go for the preparation of the upgrade or the migration, you have to run a lot of reports and take a snapshot of the report for different selections and keep it ready. So that once the migration is done, we will have to do test testing, we will have to do data validation testing, so that involves a lot of uh, testing part um, which comes into picture. So if the number of objects are huge, I would focus on increasing the number of available. But actually migration part is pretty simple. You would run the DMO. So irrespective of the data volume or the number of objects in my basis, team would be fixed. Three to four. But the number based on the number of objects I would need to uh, increase my PW team And then because I, my estimate does not consider the stabilizations of PW after the migration. We only just fine tune about few migrations, but not exactly tuning every data. Once all this is done, then we get into the stabilization part as the next phase of the project. Say migration is done, yeah. And then what are the actual performance issues there? Then we can focus on that particular data flows or that particular object, then focus it more on. So as part of then post migration we focus just on migrating all the things and converting info providers to um, uh, on a composite providers. And then uh, inconsistent the basis will be checked and complete uh, testing of the objects. And these kind of uh, activities will be done. But let's say if you want me to replace an existing transformations with the SQL scripting to improve the performance of the transformations. But that will be different this. As part of my estimate does not include these customizations or what I do for every object which we use the HANA performance. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 
Next is asking question on when you take report snapshot, yeah, do you take very detailed? Is, if you have 10 company codes, for what selection, the selection the you will take? Even after clean and housekeeping activities. And if we are planning to implement NLS, side by side view, or some bit side by side or something, I would set up the connection towards this. And the data what we do, if you want, we can also move it to the NLS so that it will shrink your database size. 
that will really help you to speed up the migration, but also you can do. And with the and as part of uh, manual activities, I'm doing the housekeeping activities with uh, checklist in STC01 with the speed of housekeeping and speed of before upgrade activities. And we'll also implement node 192972 to give the housekeeping activities. And majorly I go with the node 173433, which will give you complete HANA migration carpet. Uh, but that, but uh, all the activities coming in the STC zone is all can also be called from your beautiful HANA migration card. Because we'll have a free checklist and uh, from there you can call up which ultimately gets to that card which ultimately calls to other people, so STC zero one or others. Yeah, one seven three four triple three. Yeah. That will be my pre and post upgrade and the migration card, then we have the HANA migration card for this program. Yeah, then uh, we also have uh, some certain checklists which is specific to applications because for BW specific you might have some uh, specific activities to be performed. And again I implement the node 100009 ASU tool ball. And then I need to import that XML file and which basically creates a task. Hello? Yeah, that they actually will have something called application specific preparations to be done. Upgrade specific application specific upgrade activities. So this node actually gives an XML file which we have to download from the service marketplace and info and when you go to this uh, slash ASU slash start T code, we have to import that XML file which actually formulates this set of activities to be performed as part of free and uh, free upgrade activities. Now this actually does, does the basis, but you said as a team leader you have to instruct everyone by itself. I'll let you go with everyone so. One double zero triple zero nine. Application specific upgrade activities. Then the and when you when you even uh, in Z bit of HANA migration, when you when you check out the readiness of the system for the upgrade, it does list you a lot of nodes. And these nodes have to be implemented by the basis there. So because it does give you an error message or all those stuff for, for you. And those three of so it checks for the readiness of the system for the migration for HANA and it does me give me list of all it tells me all the errors and tells me what all nodes have to be implemented and all those nodes have to be implemented before you start up the upgrade or the migration part and they also have to do the unicode preparations in SPMG uh, because if you want to make it a unicode compared to system when it goes to 7.4 and the preparation actions also has to be done in SC, SPUMG for unicode preparations. So, and, and then actually migration part can actually start up. And once you have to take in the report snapshots and housekeeping activities and system readiness for HANA migration which is all being checked. Basically, they have run this. Major thing is the migrate trade detail is the program what they run which actually exports the complete detail statement of your database through which and this detail is again runs in HANA and creates exact database what you need, what is needed. There are some programs for SMIGR underscore create underscore detail is, is a program. When you run that it actually uh, creates a detail statement of the entire database of the existing system. <clears throat> so you will, like say you have a table, it exports a create statement of the table. So the, all these detailed statements are again exported and rerun onto HANA database so it creates the same database for us before we start moving out the Hello? So yeah, they do this and then the actual migration and uh, it starts up. Then as part of post, we would have certain activities what we have to do. Again, we have to carry out the testing and then see the performance testing and then the data validations to be done and we check out every object, every queue, every data source. The delta is being disturbed. Again, we had a problem. We had problems with PACs. Because what we did is we had uh, to clean up the delta queues because we were, we were unscheduling the parts chains. So what we did is we want to clean up the delta queue before the migration. So what we did is we run delta load twice and kept the request in PAC. Did not load it in uh, next door targets. 
I was not but, so but clear. You can be more clear. And early morning, the new column comes into the PSU table definition. And the PSU table is disturbed. The requests which are already loaded before migration could not be loaded to the next load target. We had that problem. Yeah. And then we will... So the solution is you either load the data to fill the target, fill the top level and keep. Do not stage the data in the PSA. Then just leave it. Because what we did is we just run the info package delta word twice and, and clean the delta. And had the, all the data stayed in the PSA but did not load to the next level target. That was our problem. But I, what I suggest is what are the data you have? You have run the process chain so that it takes data to the all the top level targets to keep it going depending on the data in the PSA to be leveraged after the migration. Yeah. And then we would do a yeah. yeah. After, as for the post, we will basically do, uh, because if you go to STC0 from the migration carpet, you'll have to after upgrade and after migration activities, which are there to carry out. And then we have to check the DBA carpet, that's what our migration, because in the DBA carpet, you get to see all the connection details of HANA. Whether the database connection is fine, uh, or you can also use ADBC underscore data, and the connection underscore test to see the primary database connection is fine and from there you can actually access the administration of HANA database also and see the engines, uh, how many application services we maintain is all or not or not all this, uh, you can just do an overall view check and then we get into repairing of PSA tables majorly use a program RSD underscore PS underscore path number underscore check uh, for repairing the PSA tables and then uh, we also have a problem with the mass data views because when you right click on your mark and say maintain mass data generally you are supposed to get a uh, selection screen where you basically try to see, see selection of the mark and see that right you miss those bits mark data bits and uh, so that you, you have run the program Z RS DMT underscore check underscore CH underscore views which is with the node 1892819 and again we have regenerated all the transformations RSP underscore PR and FN because once you migrate it to HANA we have a checkbox for exclude transformations in HANA in the transformations <coughs> if you have a direct mappings which does not involve other and those kind of transformations can be pushed deep into HANA database so what we do is we use a program RSP underscore PR and FN underscore activate to reactivate all the transformations when you do this what happens which of the transformations which does not involve a lot of attacks into it can be pushed, the logic of it can be pushed into deep into other database. So there are standard code procedures which are written which can exclude the stand from surface of the transformation. But if it involves a that doesn't go in. So we would basically suggest the customer after the next phase of it. Any transformation which is really causing a problem, we will start handling it in a separate case where we would have to re-implement the complete expert routine or start routine or end routine with the uh, complete sequence that's what we have to go then we also use a program of converting all the multi products towards composite products rs1 as for convert underscore ipro2 with crp yeah. yeah then also we go with the yeah yeah don't know okay okay, okay. Yeah, 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 thank you. And uh, there are also certain programs that say you might be, uh, sometimes after migration you have a lot of drums going in. And if you find there are some tables being really huge and, and, and it is trying to, it's a lot of people error saying column store error on the table. Or row store. So in that case, if there are some row store tables which are really huge and you want to really improvise the performance order to convert column store, you can also use a program RSP underscore move on underscore two underscore column. This is with the node two zero double four zero four seven node, where you can also consider some of the tables of row store to be moved towards a, a column store also. And also if there's any table inconsistencies, we check with RSP underscore table underscore consistency check. We go through that. With that. <laughs> And then you measure on the post uh, testing activities, data validation activities, testing of each data source, and just run the process chains and see whether the delta loads are able to be continued after the migration or any specific problems the uh, 
um, uh, what's the comparability with the extractors or not, or any node to be implemented for this specific extractors. This kind of activities will be going through. But as part of HANA optimizations, which is not part of this, we will focus on if there are any 3.8 data flows or prefer upgrading it now. When I'm migrating it to 7, and migrating the experience and workbooks also from 3.7 I will focus on. And converting it tubes to HANA optimized tubes, yeah. uh, RS and RS, MITR, HANA DB, or convert the tubes to HANA migration that's pretty common. Then if aggregates will be removed or completely. And uh, suppose if I have a tubes on top of DSOs, which are just used for aggregating the data, let's say generally what we do is we have our DSO to stage here with the DTL1 and the tube at the top of the four aggregated. In that case, I can eliminate the tubes and start using those DSOs into the one, replace those objects into the DSOs into multiple levels so that reporting is done on DSP. We are eliminating the uh, next level, layers also. Because now it is the LSA plus plus, we simplify the layers. Exactly. Exactly. That will save a lot of space. See, generally what happens when they use LSA, a uh, lot of architects they've been implementing PW like uh, staging PSO, then we have one more PSO, then we have other PSO. For every transformation, they wanted to have a staging at with the PSO. They had the flexing when it was non-HANA database. But when it comes to HANA database, I don't think this should be the architecture because the LSA plus plus comes in which is simplified. Even if you want to have multiple level of transformations, you have to go with multi-level info source, but do not have state. Try to make it very simple. We have extractors, carpet memory, and then let's say you have your providers. And straight away, if you want to have multiple level complex transformations, include multiple level of info source. Have the staging at PS1 and then start doing report. And you can start combining both HANA modeling as well as PW modeling together. Consuming the DS as an article view and then importing into calculus view. So you can do depending on the scenario by scenario. And then I would prefer utilizing uh, and in the scenario we go with the advanced DSOs. And where it is cubes, I can go with the advanced DSOs required for additive nature. For overwriting, I can go with classic DSO. And the, and where it's possible, I push down the transformation logic to take it on by implementing specific scripting expert, SQL script expert or and pretty much strong in writing SQL script also. And we can start, now we can start using Eclipse tool with beautiful modeling tools and start working on even for some cases of fixed query. We can use query snapshot to improve query performance. And, and then uh, with respect to optimizations might have to be carried out in the process, but that is not really critical, but okay. Like uh, removing of rollups and uh, building out, uh, building or building indexes can be removed or DB statistics are no more required. And also one more thing, suppose you have BWA accelerator that will be out after the migration. So there might be some cubes which have been um, where the data staging is BWA accelerator. And those all those kind of cubes will become inactive after the migration. So we have to activate this cube as a normal standard cube and reload the data back from the underlying PSO to those cubes. So all the cubes which where the data staging is BWA accelerator will be deactivated. So those cubes have to be activated back again and we have reloaded, reloaded all the data back from the underlying PS1 to the cube set. Uh, yeah, because if you look at the info cube, uh, we can have something that's staging in database as well. Yeah. So all the info cubes where the data is being stored in PW accelerator will be inactive after the migration because there is no more PW accelerator once HANA comes. So for all these cubes, we have to reactivate those cubes again as a correction request and then reload the data to these cubes because we, the data is lost to those cubes. So we need to reload back from the underlying base to these cubes. Yeah. Yeah. And no more unoptimized DSO, use classical DSO. That's what no more it supports uh, unoptimized DSO no more. Yeah, info, info sets also can be converted as a... a so means can I convert program. existing info set to composite product and same program can be used, I said. The program what I gave you on conversion, the same thing can be used to convert even info sets also. Or as we convert IPR over to... Yeah, yeah. 
understood what we've done is before uh, migration, we have actually had the snapshot of all the reports of different selection sites. Then after the migration, we would start questioning what on the testing. We would report the same selection and get the data out. Or model year. Tell the coach, yeah. Exactly. What are, the, what are the selections you have already run the report? We should have the selections and the data kept in regular. Right? Then that's yeah, yeah. No, 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 I will not take 10 company codes. I'll just say there is a for one report, I'll obviously take one snapshot. Say say company code one. I'll take it at, at the aggregated level. You start going very detailed level. I'll take it like say you said company code, right? If I have 10, I'll try to have a report snapshot with 10 company codes in rows and with all the KPs. So if, if, if it is okay at company code level, I think pretty much data should be fine if there are any any print of them. Yeah, together. Because in previously I worked with BW HANA migration and I was working as BW on HANA as well as HANA is being leveraged as enterprise and all. Together. It's a mixed approach part. Exactly. I'm a contractor and I'm being outsourced by the company at time. Great, great. I'm done with Gregor in November and I had my vacation in December and uh, looking for a new assignment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, B-Tech thing. And I think that is all personal. So we'll stop it here and tomorrow we'll look at NLS. <clears throat> I think my connection is not fine. Sorry, it was functional models and the uh, programs, we don't, we write some custom programs, say for example, upload file. F4 upload and then you get a browser, uttered file, uttered function will absolute take They give some list of programs which they are using for BW. So when we run those programs, it fails. And when you, say, when you, when you try to run those programs, it, you get an error. Then when we check the error dump, it says this function model is no more on the That is the testing we do. Okay. Ah, I'll tell you. Why? PPT. Oh, sir, NLS is under two summer. If this NLS, NLS connection is fine, then we can work on. We can see that topic. The side by side is like uh, temporary one, it's only 30 days valid. I, again, I need to install tomorrow, I set that. So tomorrow we will see NLS and one is on transporting HANA objects along with BW transport. So I got, HANA, I got BW or HANA, I want to collect HANA models into delivery unit and I want to collect the delivery unit into BW TS and how do we do that. That's two things. And uh, what do you ask me? This dark one. Yeah, see if you go to Google yeah. for more detailed documentation uh, SAP PW HANA migration first guidance you see if you say SAP PW HANA migration first guidance and if you get into this uh, And if you say view dark mode, you say I say okay, the problem, but actually it should open up this dark mode.
ఆకు ఆర్ పీడిఎఫ్ కూడా ఉంది యూ హ్యావ్ ఇది ఇట్ లో ఇది డౌన్ ఉంటుంది బట్ ఇట్ ఓపెన్స్ ఫస్ట్ గైడెన్స్ ఈజ్ ది వన్ వాట్ ఎస్ యూ హ్యావ్ ఫిల్ రిపోర్ట్ ఓకే బస్ and tomorrow we'll see nls and transport so pretty much we should be done by tomorrow or if not there will be some open topics on tuesday by wednesday i'll discuss more on interview point of view mm, still what you like if you deal with hana with database what kind of questioning you get modeling what kind of questioning you get so ever ever come on separate time in the web panel how do you call the scripting with the not focus more good and good we have something on a native development which i don't want to touch because it is already there in open sap what i do we have taught on a development at a one stretch one three hours video i have this video i'll just give you that video just go through because there is no requirements on that particular topic there is only i'm only confusing you people not, nothing there. it's all programming on javascripting html i only confuse you nothing i'm not giving you anything so it's waste of time so i'll give one the three hours video on it what i've taught for previous batch just use that video that should be more than enough. don't worry much it's the same as what they taught, what they taught in open sap creating audit service or sap ui creating application site all this i've done from basic i've just took some database i took some applic- simple application just go to that should be more than enough not to waste time. So tomorrow we'll finish the pending topics, NLS and that stuff, and we'll try to, dis- if it, we finish all topics tomorrow, we'll spend one day on discussing interview point of view, then we can close it. Okay.